While I was in grad school at the American University, we went on an after-hours field trip to the National Air and Space Museum. I'd been before several times, but this time I was asked to view it more critically. One of the exhibits posed a problem. The exhibit on stewardesses was very popular, specifically among teenage girls and young women, but for the wrong reasons. It asked them, in so many words, whether or not they had the right look to be a mid-century stewardess. Physically, the exhibit included a wall lined with criteria they had to meet. They had to be a specific height, a specific weight, had to have a certain kind of hair styled in a specific way, with nails and makeup done perfectly right. To add modern insult to historic injury, the wall ended with a mirror so that, at any time, the visitor could turn their head and see whether or not they measured up. My first thought when given this prompt was that the violation to the workers' rights of these women was so obvious that no change needed to be made to the exhibit. One could look at the list of criteria and think, my goodness, nobody I know meets all of these. There's a serious problem here regarding one's right to work. The problem is that this isn't how the visitors were actually thinking. They were turning their heads and looking at themselves and feeling badly about how they looked, both about things they could change, like the nail polish they were wearing, and the things they couldn't, like if they were too tall or too short for the job. Over the past few years, I have occasionally given some thought to how I would adjust the exhibit to meaningfully address this problem and meet the visitors where they are. After more careful consideration, I started thinking that one way to more meaningfully cover the topic while addressing the problems of the old exhibit was to tell the story as one of labor rights. Fundamentally, the issues the stewardesses faced were based in discrimination, and the companies they worked for could get away with it until the stewardesses won legal protection in the workplaces. The museum could even keep the framing device, but draw more attention to the fact that these criteria for hire and job retention were violently anti-worker and downright ridiculous. The stories of these women who pioneered the rights could be showcased as civil rights heroes. In fact, I've been planning to make a video on this for a couple of years now, and a month ago I made plans to take pictures to illustrate my points. What I found, however, was that in the intervening years, the Air and Space Museum had already made these changes. Halls of cases showcase the uniforms both mid-century and contemporary, and plaques describe the problems associated with the old uniforms and the old understanding of what the role of a stewardess was and should be. They describe the lawsuits against the employers that won the workers' rights and the shift from the role of stewardess to flight attendant. It's really exciting to be able to make this video congratulating a big museum on a change that I think they did really well. In a lot of ways, the transition was a challenging one. The old stewardess exhibit was popular, so whatever came next had to be a showstopper. And not only did they course correct on the message, but they made the new exhibit bigger and better than the last one had been. If you get the chance to go to the National Air... Who am I kidding? When you go to the National Air and Space Museum, pay attention to how the curators tell the story, because they put a lot of attention both into the details and information they share and into the underlying message.